Hey friends, Chad Goldwasser, Pure Gold Realty. Welcome back to Living in Austin, Texas. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about the top 10 things you can do to negotiate strongly as a buyer in today's challenging market. Stick around till the end. I'm gonna give you the bonus, the number one thing you should think about when buying a home in today's challenging market. We're here at this beautiful property in central Austin, Texas. Welcome back to Living in Austin, Texas. So as a buyer, how do we know values? How can we trust an agent? How do we understand what we should offer on a home? When we see a home that we love, how do we know it's priced correctly? Here's one thing you can do to negotiate strongly as a buyer in today's challenging market. Study and learn the other properties. Once you find a home that you love, Find 10 other properties around it that are priced in that same price category and go look at those properties. So if the property you're looking at is $4 million, go look at everything from 3.5 to 4.5 million. Look at those properties, look at their price per square foot, the condition of those properties to determine where you should offer on the property that you're looking at. That's number one. The number two thing you should look at when you're looking at negotiating on the price of a property, now that the market's shifting and we're changing to where buyers are paying their buyer's agents, you should look at what are the buyer's agents being paid on the properties that you're looking at? This is something that can dramatically affect the price. If a seller now is deciding that they're not going to pay a buyer's agent a full fee on the marketing of their property, that could affect your ability to negotiate. So make sure you're checking what the buyer's agents are being paid on the property that you're looking to purchase. Number three, the condition of the property that you're looking at. I'm not talking about the overall beauty of it. I'm talking about the air conditioning unit. I'm talking about the roof, the foundation, the water heater, the electrical, all of the things that make that property a solid property you need to take a look at. Make sure that before you even make your offer that you're looking at the condition of that property and understanding how it compares to those other properties that I told you to look at before. Number three, the condition of that property. Number four, the staging of that property. Is there underwear on the ground? Are the baseboards dirty? Is the water heater clean? You have to look at the staging of that property. Is it beautiful like this home I'm sitting at right now? Staged to perfection. A home that is staged on average sells for seven to 10% more than a home that is not staged. So check out the staging of the property. That will affect the price. Number four, staging of the property. Number five, something you should think about when negotiating on the sale of a property that you're looking to buy. Asking the seller to pay points to buy down the interest rate of the loan that you're getting. With interest rates rising from 2.5% to almost 7% over the course of the past two years, buyers are scared that the payments are higher, they want their interest rates lower. So something you should ask for and think about when you're purchasing a property, and a lot of sellers are doing it, is to have that seller pay a point or two or three points towards the interest rate on your mortgage to get the rate of your mortgage down, which makes your monthly investment that much better. So number five, ask the seller to pay points on the loan that you're getting on your home. Number six, six. Ask a seller to pay your closing costs. In Austin, Texas right now, we have over 14,000 homes on the market. That's a lot. Sales were down last month, 15% over last year at this time. Understand the numbers. This will allow you when you're going in to negotiate on the price of a property and to ask a seller to pay your closing costs, you understand the market, you understand what other properties are going for, and you can ask a seller, pay $10,000 towards the closing costs. That will help you to save money at the closing of the property and come to closing with less cash. Number six, ask the seller to pay some closing costs. Number seven, make sure your agents, whoever you hire, if you choose to have an agent, that they know the market well, that they've got a high level of negotiating on your behalf in a real estate transaction, and that they are going to represent you in the best way possible. The agent that you choose can make a massive difference in the price of the home that you're purchasing. I wanna tell you a story real quick. I was helping a client of mine, some of my best friends, they found a property, they loved it. It was not on the market yet, it was priced at, let's just say two million, 
probably should have been priced at three. They said, we're never going to get this home. And so I called the agent and I asked that agent, hey, where'd you get your pricing from? And he said, oh, I, you know, it just, it seems right, but I was trying to get them under two. And in my mind, I'm like, that should be at three. I said, if I bring you an offer for two point one. Do you think your client would take it and not put it on the market? We ended up getting that property for 2.1. It ended up appraising, which this never happens, appraised at 2.6. That seller lost almost $500,000 because they did not have an agent that knew how to negotiate. I knew the market. I knew how to negotiate. I utilized those skills to get my client the best price for their property. So make sure the agent that you choose is one of the best in the business. Number seven, choose a great agent. Number eight, know what you're looking for and let your agent know. Understand exactly what you want in a home and then start to search and look at everything. Just like I go out every week and look at tons of properties so that I understand the market and so that I can properly educate my clients, you should do that. Understand what you want, put all that information into the multiple listing service, all that information into realtor.com. Find all the properties that fit your criteria and then go look at them all. Seeing all those properties, it's gonna give you more opportunities to be able to negotiate strongly on your own behalf, as well as having the agent negotiate strongly on your behalf. You're gonna be able to say to your agent and the other agent, hey, this is what we saw. We have a lot that we're interested in. And this is why we're choosing yours first, but there's so much more out there. In all markets right now, there is an excess of inventory. So look at everything, understand the market, make sure you understand what you want. Number nine. Get the property inspected and thoroughly review that inspection report. As a seller's agent that is very aware of how to represent my sellers in the best way possible, I always pre-inspect my properties, which means when I list the home, I actually have it inspected. So I understand the condition. A typical traditional average real estate agent does not do this. And so they'll put the home on the market. They don't know the condition. So when you go and inspect it, be thorough in your review of the repairs that need to be made, that will allow you to go back and negotiate the price down or credits or repairs on that home that you may not have been able to otherwise. So number nine, get a great inspection. Number 10 is the bonus. Choose the best agent you can find. I know I harp on this all the time and call me, text me, email me if you want a great agent to represent you. And I'm not just talking about me. If you're in Alaska, I can refer you to someone. If you're coming to Austin, Texas, I'd love it if you worked with me. But if you don't, find a great agent. I am incredibly passionate about what I do because I believe when someone's buying a home with me, they're giving me the opportunity to guide and lead them in one of the most stressful transactions of their life. When someone's selling a home, they're putting one of their most incredible assets in my hands. So I never wanted to be good. I never wanted to be great. I wanted to be legendary. I wanted to be the best there ever was because I truly do care. Like what I do is important. So number 10, the bonus, the number one thing you should do is hire the best agent that you can find and then make sure they kick butt for you. That's number 10. There you have it. The top 10 things you should think about when you're negotiating as a buyer, when you're buying a home in today's challenging market. There you have it. Call me, text me, or email me if you need my help. If you have questions, comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see. Subscribe, tell your friends, and come back next week to Living in Austin, Texas.